Um, great pleasure to be here. And um, to give you a little bit in uh, background of uh, what Moya is, Moya is a daughter company of Volkswagen Group, and uh, we are still somehow the new kid on the block, so only one and a half years old, uh, roughly. And we are only concerned with mobility as a service, so we have the mobility as a service company of the Volkswagen Group. So uh, my little keynote today is uh, about my beliefs and our insights and beliefs into what it takes uh, to bring people into shared mobility. Because obviously here at this uh, great conference, everybody is totally convinced that sharing, that pooling of rights is really one of the key solutions for, for urban transport. But unfortunately, uh, we see that um, the big pooling movement, like I called it, did not really start it yet. So, and why is that? Um, we just recently conducted a little survey in uh, Germany, so we are based in Germany, and we asked 2,000 commuters um, to, to try to understand uh, their behavior and what they think about it and so on, and results are not really like entirely new, but still confirming that there's a long way to go, and I always refer to the thing as a marathon. So most of the guys confirm that sitting in a traffic jam is not really nice, uh, and they hate it, and it brings stress and everything. Um, and most of the guys also uh, confirm that, that they know and that they understand that this puts a strain on the environment. Um, and for me, one of the biggest reasons why I personally would decide to share my rights and not drive personally is that I regard sitting in a traffic jam or steer through the city as really a waste of, of my lifetime. So that was also confirmed by the majority. But you see it in the very end of this uh, little chart. Um, still, people driving alone in their cars. So 90% of the people are driving alone every day in that huge two tons whatever vehicle and uh, so sharing is not a big movement yet. So um, there are a lot of reasons uh, for it that, that we believe uh, are, are key to, to be solved in order to increase like, the, the sharing rate. And first of all, it's the lack of attractive mobility options. So um, the individual car provides you with a lot of freedom. You can decide whether you go to the gym in the afternoon or in the late evening. And you always know that you will come home again after, after finishing your, your exercise. Um, and um, so, first of all, uh, uh, services are lacking. Um, another one is um, people aren't really aware of all these options and, uh, and do not know how to build that into their commuting uh, uh, um, uh, habits or behavior. And we know all these fancy discussions around mobility as a service, platform integration, uh, just one app, one ticketing, and so on. For me, that's important, but that's something for the, for the future and a couple of years from now. Uh, but now, first of all, we need to create services, uh, opportunities that are really covering a lot of the use cases at hand. Psychological barriers are one of the things. I'm totally convinced about that. So that's A. Uh, the thing that you do not want to sit shoulder to shoulder with some stranger in a vehicle. And if you really think about um, autonomous driving in the future, it becomes even worse because uh, to share a autonomous vehicle with somebody without that there's a driver, a so-called referee inside, that brings another like challenge to the whole thing. And what's also true, and uh, so cities are now really like engaging in that uh, particular field is we are lacking incentives to really stimulate this uh, sharing movement and to convince people that it's better and cheaper uh, to travel with a shared mobility option than use the individual car. We at Moya believe um, that we need to have an integrated approach in order to convince people about sharing. What, what does it mean? It means that our hardware, so the vehicle, should fit the digital product. So both needs to be great, both need to be uh, individualized because our sweet spot in the market is not like the public transport uh, uh, thing, it's also not like the taxi or private car end of the thing, but we really want to provide options that can convince lots of people that use their private car today in a city to commute. And obviously in the middle, Technology, we are a technology company, is key. We want to uh, build the best 
and most efficient pooling system. There we talk about algorithms, we talk about artificial intelligence. And uh, we want to provide at the least detours, for example. So because people, when they think about sharing, they think, okay, I'm going to, from A to B, but uh, during the trip, somebody will board and that will enhance or enlarge my, my travel time. And so we want, to, uh, we want to make sure that each detour is, is, uh, is, is in the maximum only three minutes more than if you would travel uh, alone. And that's really a huge and, and complex challenge, um, but we are working on it and I think we did some, some uh, really nice progress here. So I brought a little video just to explain a little bit more uh, uh, lively what we are doing and that you can understand our like philosophy. Do I need to start this? Yes. Request a Moya simply by selecting a destination on the Moya app. You're ready in a few clicks. Our algorithm calculates a Moya to pick you up and a route that gets you to your chosen destination as quickly as possible. The app will direct you to the most convenient virtual stop, never more than 250 meters from you. It's important for all passengers that the vehicle keeps moving swiftly, so we use quick flow boarding, giving you a fair window of time to embark the vehicle without causing a delay to your or anyone else's journey. Sit back and enjoy the ride. We thought about how to make your journey as comfortable as possible. You'll notice that your seat has lots of space around it. While you will share your ride in a Moya, you won't have to share your personal space. The on-screen display notifies you that you have arrived. Step out at your virtual stop, meters from your destination. Moya, social movement. So I think or I hope that this little uh, video gave you a little bit of flavor of what we mean with integrating the hardware and the software product. Um, and going forward, our like long-term or mid-term vision is that we want to become one of the most like uh, successful operators of autonomous fleets. And as I just mentioned, with autonomous fleets, there, there are even more like requirements that we need to cover. So we foresee in our current non-AD vehicles already lots of stuff that we want to bring also with like uh, the autonomous uh, part of the thing. And this is just a couple of building blocks that are really important to us and that, that can that they're be totally convinced of that we need to, to, to find the right solutions here in order to convince people to share their rights. So it's the exterior, that's all about like the communication of the vehicle with the rider, it's also the experience, it should not look aggressive and all this kind of stuff. The interior, you, you just got a hint of what we, mean about, uh, what we mean about that. So it's really like individual space, it's like room, it's connectivity, it's, it's, it's free Wi-Fi in the vehicle. Um, and um, so there are lots of things, and I only want to highlight two or three uh, here. Um, so accessibility, that's really a huge challenge, and we are really keen to solve that issue. We want to be an inclusive uh, a company. Uh, we, our ambition is uh, to democratize mobility, so therefore our services should be available to, to nearly all uh, people uh, in a city. Safety is especially important, as I mentioned, for the autonomous uh, driving future, because we are not only talking about functional safety, cyber security, uh, uh, cyber, uh, security and this kind of stuff, but also about, for example, in-car safety, how to detect uh, um, uh, not appropriate behavior, um, how to detect who is in the vehicle, who is allowed to be in the vehicle, who should not be in the vehicle, um, uh, what, what's potentially left in the vehicle, an umbrella or whatever, and um, all these, these kind of things, um, uh, or an emergency case, uh, if you see that, that, that people are getting sick, so how would a vehicle without a driver react? That's something that we work about, uh, 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 and, and what we believe is totally important to convince people to share. But also true, the customers need to change their mobility behavior in order to see big adoption rates of shared mobility. Um, and um, 
I'm, I'm convinced that it will take some time that people really have like these kind of services in their relevant set. Yeah? When they wake up and when they want to start their commute, they really need to think about these uh, different options and needs to sit in their heart and mind. Um, they, they need to have trust in the services, so it, it's, it's great if you use our service uh, and then in the evening you couldn't get a ride back home, so that's then potentially not, not really uh, satisfying. And also when we talk about all these pilots that we currently see in the streets, pilots are nice, but what happens if the pilot period is over then? Is then the service gone again? And do people then really trust in these kind of services? Potentially not. Um, public education is a huge thing, and I just came back from Singapore, and I'm pretty amazed how they tackle that. So really like also paving the way for uh, towards autonomous driving. Uh, so they, they, they have a plan how, for example, to uh, integrate the bus drivers into the transformation journey, really like uh, having them as, as, as service advocates. They, they have plans to do the reskilling for the autonomous future. And uh, so that's a task that not only the the public side has to do, but also companies like us. We need to really explain what we are doing, why we are doing it, and why it's beneficial, for example, for the environment. And the, the, the last one is really a very important one. Um, people need to understand the real cost of like using personal cars in a city. And today that's not at least not at a broad range, the fact. So people somehow take the, the, the car, the leasing rate as a given, so that's already paid. And everything what's come, what is then in addition comes on top. And, and that's a process that will, a process, um, that will also take a couple of years um, that we really see that, that people understand and see, okay, a, a, a car costs me $300, $400 a month. Uh, if I would use all these services, it would, even, would be even cheaper and more convenient. And then, last but not least, uh, this is very, very important. We need to have the right legal framework in place. So we at Moya believe in legislation and regulation. We, we think this market needs to be regulated, uh, but it cannot be regulated sitting in, in, uh, in a desk somewhere in an office. But we need, we, that means mobility companies, public transport companies, public authorities, we need to develop the legal framework together while we are walking. And this is something where some cities are already pretty like progressive and advanced, um, but to my feeling, most of them are not. So you're still wondering what could that be? And is there not a danger or a conflict of interest in our things? And um, also what's true, um, cities around the world need to define specific strategies. Yeah, so uh, there are some examples where cities, uh, for example, have a objective to decrease private car ownership by 20% until 2030. These kind of things are important um, um, uh, to bring this forward. So time is up, but I only need three minutes more. Um, the, uh, the public space, obviously, we are all talking about that, like, yeah, if we would have fewer cars, we could have more space for other things. What would be the, these other things? And how could we really design it? That's a question that also needs to be answered. And if we do this all together, um, then we really will create a sharing movement, what we call a social movement. Um, but again, I think it will take us a couple of years from now. Thank you very much.